All right, guys, we're about to put the plastic on. Oh, there you have it. Plastic went up that easy. I'm just kidding. Here's the real footage. <laughs> oh, this is still heavy. So, Maya on a ladder. Some of our neighbors have come over to help us. We've got a rope tied around, like a knot of the plastic here. We're just trying to feed it up. Oh, here comes the wind. This is a big deal, huh, guys? Testing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Maya clipped it with a big clip at the place that he reached. And he moved his ladder over, and I think he's going to try to scoot it over and clip it again. What is what? Where, what are we hung up on? There? The ball's hung up right here. I'm asking is when you get the shovel. I guess it's a good thing I stopped planting peppers. <laughs> the little knot is hung up. There we go. Oh, Ben turn, please don't fall down. Yeah, Ben turn just gives me heart pain. <laughs> If you get airborne, it's going on YouTube. <laughs> That's wild. It looks like we have enough length. We could probably pull this off and just use it as part of the cutoff. That extra down there. It's off sand. We've got extra. So. That wiggle wire out. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> it wasn't windy when we started, and now. <laughs> hey, Jackson, go find the corner. Go to the corner. Yeah. There you go. Did someone get Hold someone the corner down. <laughs> there you go. Back. Oh gosh. <laughs> Woohoo! I don't want that Hold your down. Both these tall ladders, probably. Yeah. So in five minutes, it's already significantly warmer in here than out there. It's pretty crazy. What is that? I found this laying in the barn. You found it in the duck's yard? Yeah, they sure do make messy eggs. We'll set it aside so we can wash it off and take it in. So all that holds it on is those wires and those no. tracks? No. Oh. There's a black strap that screws into the board and it goes over each gap. Oh, okay. Over each one. So you're just saying the wiggle wire will suffice for right now? Yeah, we're about to finish. We're about okay. to put in another wiggle wire across this top bar and that's going to really... Each layer is more security. Okay, well good. It's not going to blow away. Hey, Maya. I suppose not. Bam. What, bam, we grow food? We grow food. What are you doing? Just making a video of you looking super cute there with Bear. You found a worm? <laughs> Wait, do pigs eat worms? I think the ducks would probably appreciate the worm more. The pigs would, might eat it. So I just went to get a tray of peppers because I'm carrying my peppers back here to finish planting this bed. And I picked up the tray and it had the bottom water tray underneath it and a wasp come out and stung me in my belly. And I screamed out. <laughs> at nature. It said, stop stinging us. All right, you wanna help plant these peppers, Malia? Yes. Me too. You gonna help too? Yeah. All right, let's go in the greenhouse. Let's go see how hot it is in this high tunnel. They're securing it down on both sides. I think it's gonna be really warm in here. Oh, snap. Wow. Wow, okay. Ha! 10 degrees hotter no, in here. No, it's like 30. It's making that air feel cold. Oh, wow, that's intense. <laughs> 
up on with that. Well done. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. <laughs> That's crazy. Are you making this feel so cold? Wow. Come on, let's go get the let's go get a thermometer. <laughs> What'd you say, Ben? So we're gonna go get an air conditioner. No, we're not gonna go get an air conditioner. We're gonna go get a thermometer. We just want to see how warm it is in there. Air conditioner. Well, I thought I had um, another thermometer. I don't know where it is. We just looked in all the places I thought it would be. Do y'all lose things in your own house? Just me. Wow, it's so warm in here. It's probably 100 degrees in this high tunnel. Seriously, my lens just fogged up in here because it had been outside. That's how warm it is. Uh, we're gonna plant for a little while, making sure not to get too hot. Vegas girl over here is telling me this is nothing for her, so <laughs> we're gonna try to get these peppers planted. When the wasp stung my belly, I threw the tray of plants down and I broke some. I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's no saving these. They're broken off at the soil. Oh man, I just planted those so fast. I sent Malia over here to plant on the shady side. So hot. I'm pouring sweat. I sent Benjamin out because he was like huffing and puffing and trying to stop and take a drink every few seconds. So I was like, I think you need to go out. It's too hot in here. And me and Malia are about to come out. We got these trays planted, but we're gonna wait until it cools off. The sun's kind of getting right below the trees, which is making it a little more tolerable. It's like a sauna. Get your daily sweat in. Those that you're planting are called nodapenos. So they're like jalapenos, <laughs> but they don't have any heat. This dirt is really hard. So it's like we can make like stuffed jalapenos and stuff like that with them for the kids that don't like spicy. That's but smart. they taste good like peppers. Here, uh, we're gonna put our ground cherries. So I just left some space for that and then we'll pick back up with peppers. <laughs> <laughs> it's for real like 30 or 40 degrees cooler hot. outside than it oh, is yeah. in here. This is this is crazy. I'm it's poor. working. Oh my gosh. Look the plants are like, thank you, Benton, our savior. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like wow. Guys, y'all wanna know how hot it is in here? Bear is opting out. He's he's opting to be somewhere other than where I am. <laughs> came in here and was like, nope, and turned around and walked out. Well, hey, we know we're gonna be able to grow food whenever it gets cold outside. <laughs> the model of our greenhouse is a high sidewall. It's from Grower Solution. For those of you who haven't heard us talk about it before, the reason we're doing a high tunnel in the hot south where we are, uh, we can actually, this model, it has an apparatus where you can roll the sides up. We just haven't gotten that far in installing that today. And uh, it just got so hot in here so fast. Uh, so we're just putting some clamps up to hold the sides up right now because the plants are literally starting to droop because of, of being this hot for even just an hour. What, baby? You getting ready to be able to roll it up? Yeah, getting close. I can't believe how hot it got in there so fast. That pretty wild. We're currently getting a lot of new subscribers every day and so for those of you who have been with us for a little while um, I appreciate you bearing with me repeating things but I, I want people to understand why we're doing the things that we're doing. So we are growing these tomatoes, lots of peppers, some eggplants, ground cherries, probably gonna throw some cucumbers back here in the most shaded area of that back corner. In a high tunnel this year with the sides open so it can be vented. And we also have a big shade cloth that goes over the top. And so that seems kind of counterproductive. Like why would you build this big structure to shade it and vent it? But basically we live in an area, we, it's very wet. We get a lot of uh, rain, a lot of humidity, it is hot. And in growing in a high tunnel, we're able to really control the water that gets on our plants. So all of this will be watered by drip irrigation um, at the bottom of all of these plants. 
which gives us the capacity to just control that factor in growing. Like fungal stuff and uh, just disease that comes with humidity is something we really struggle with here. And a lot of people who grow on a larger scale do so in high tunnels because you have more control. Then being able to extend the season beyond the frost and through the winter is also a huge benefit. I don't know how much we will extend the season past the frost, probably a little bit in winter. I think we could potentially be growing tomatoes and peppers into November, which is cool. But that's not really why we did this. We weren't trying to grow frost tender things in the winter. Um, however, because our winters are fairly mild, with just this protection, we'll roll the sides down and close the, the high tunnel up. And we will be able to grow things like brassicas, uh, like kales and cabbages and cauliflower and broccoli and all of that through the winter, lots of root vegetables. And in here, it will provide them a measure of protection. And we built our beds. There's actually gonna be one more uh, board along the edge of these beds. We built them squared like this so that we can put another low tunnel over each bed if it's necessary. I don't even think we're gonna need that because it just doesn't get that cold here. I know that's what people do in much colder areas, but I really just don't think it's gonna be needed. I think the high tunnel is gonna be enough. Is this necessary for somebody just wanting to grow a garden? Absolutely not, but this is what we do and we want to push the limits of what we're able to do. And this high tunnel is definitely gonna help that. Another thing that I'm thinking about as I fill this up, I'm gonna go ahead and fill these beds up with peppers and tomatoes, and we'll just see how they perform throughout the summer. I usually do deal with blights and different things like that by about August, and I'm anticipating not dealing with that this year. However, we'll see how that goes. If I need to, when it comes down to planting fall crops, I will tear things out to make room for the fall crops to grow through the winter. Uh, but I'll just cross that bridge when I get here. As of right now, I'm gonna fill the whole thing up and use it to the max over this season, because why not? I'm a <laughs> I told Ben to go get the garden cart. That's one way to go get it, Ben. <laughs> All right, let's go get some more plants from the greenhouse. I found out today that our, pack, our alpacas are actually getting sheared on Friday, so it's sooner than I thought it was gonna be. I'm really excited to one, see them sheared because they look really cute. Two, to start working with their fiber because that's gonna be fun. I've got some carters uh, to card that and start spinning it. I don't know how much time I'll do have to do that this current season, but soon, hopefully. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad that that wasp stung me. I think Jeremiah came out and took care of them. He found the wasp nest that was in here. It was in the tray that I picked up, which is so bizarre. I've never had that happen before. So my cousin is coming to get some plants here in just a little bit. I need to plant, oh, I'm sorry, Bear. I need to plant these cucumbers in my raised bed garden. Let's plant these cukes right here. I'm growing quite a few cucumbers this year. A few different varieties. I'm doing the Armenian White Long and Cash Market Cukes, Wisconsin SMR, Boston Pickling. I got some random ones I picked up at a local place called Pickle Cukes. I don't know, I'm assuming that's an F1. Of course, I've got my Parisian Pickling Cucumbers. Um, I had a really, really good cucumber year, year before last, where I just had a ton of cucumbers and I made so many pickles and uh, we just, we ate so many cucumbers. That was the year that the pig wouldn't even eat cucumbers. We had so many. Uh, but last year was not as good. I didn't plant as many because I didn't want to get overwhelmed again. And then it just got really hot really fast in the spring and they just didn't do very well. So I didn't put up nearly as many. Thankfully I had enough from the year before that I didn't need to. But this year I'm really banking on another good cucumber year. So I just planted the Ancash, no I just planted the Silver Slicers on this side. And I meant to put Silver Slicers on this side, but I, did, I messed up. I put the Ancash Market Cukes, these are Silver Slicers. Oh well, I'll just have a cucumber smorgasbord hodgepodge in the garden. I'm starting to feel like that might be the theme this year. 
Here I planted this nasturtium near the cucamelon trellis, but I did not realize that this was a trailing nasturtium. So I'm trying to decide if I want to pull it out because I don't want it to take over the cucamelon trellis. Cucamelons take a little while to get established. Over here on this trellis, I have a couple of Ancash Market cukes, which I was going to put those other ones in. I gotta weed this, but now they'll have silver slicers for neighbors. Some of my nasturtiums look like majestic specimens of their kind and some look like this and I'm really not sure why that is they were started together next to one another they have the same soil amendments they get really the same light now this is a different variety this one from that one over there but that one and this one were planted at the same time they were transplanted at the same time same water it just it's crazy to me I don't I really don't know why that is bear you can't play with Thorin. Back by my side now that the temperature's right, I see. <laughs> if I had to guess which tomato was going to win the race of first producer this year, I would put my money on this Sweet 100s. No, this is Yellow Pear. Um, it is just so much bigger than all the rest. Days like today are a little butt kicking when it comes to getting so much stuff done. Um, and just working really hard, knocking things off the list. But it is very satisfying when you get to the end of the day. Sun goes down, starts cooling off, and you just like, you know you got some stuff handled that day. And you know that what work you did is gonna produce something. It's very, very gratifying. Malia is getting impatient. She's ready to eat <laughs> tomatoes. Yes. She said that she does not eat tomatoes from the grocery store. No, I don't. <laughs> And why is that? Store-bought tomatoes taste like <laughs> disappointment. disappointment. <laughs> That's right. We were eating peas off the vine earlier. She was like, store-bought peas taste like disappointment too. And they really do. They like do. there's so many things. I, I don't eat store-bought tomatoes. I actually go to places and order my food without tomatoes. Unless they're growing like locally grown heirlooms in season. I'm just like no tomatoes and it's so funny when somebody who doesn't like know me really well but knows that I'm like the tomato person they'll be like really you don't and I'm like I'm not, I'm not eating that <laughs> so, that is like a, a store-bought tomato that's grown on the other side of the world shipped unripe literally it tastes like somebody who has never really had a tomato describes what a tomato might taste like. Like their imagination <laughs> of what a tomato might taste like. That's what store-bought tomatoes taste like to me. That was a really smart way of putting it. Yeah, so we will wait a little impatiently and whisper sweet nothings to these plants while they uh, get ready to give us our heart's desire. <laughs> Benjamin's playing in the water and Bear's just watching. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all this chamomile coming up in the walkways. That's what that is right there. It's chamomile that reseeded from last year. It's all over right here. There's some more in the bed. It's really about time that we're gonna have to weed whack these walkways, but I may go through first and just transplant all the treasures out of them that have reseeded from last year. Come on, man, we're gonna take these plants back to the high tunnel. No, you can't change. Let's get... I know you're soaking wet. You'll be cooled off in the high tunnel. Come on. You can change after we're done playing. Wow, that looks amazing. All right, let's finish planting these peppers. It's much more uh, enjoyable to be in here now. That was rough. A lot of pepper plants. Yep, but keep, keep digging. Some peppers are going out in the big garden. Most of the peppers are going to be in the high tunnel. I just decided, and I really just think that this is gonna be the best thing for them. And we already have so many squash in the ground there. We have melons. Um, I am planting a lot of cucumbers in the front. I think I'm gonna give a little space to them in here to give it a try. But peppers really like it hot. And I just think that they're going to thrive in this environment. So that's what we're giving a lot of space to out here. Plus I ended up with way more pepper plants than I realized. You planting them? Good job. I'm, I'm moving them a little far away from the edge so it doesn't. Yeah, that's good. You should move it a little far away from the edge. edge. That one's right at the edge. Yeah, that one is. And it might be okay. Yeah. You could move them over like to like right here. Okay, right there. That'd be good. Good job. Right there. Then, 
one scoop. And I'm back in it. Okay, do you want to plant some in the bed? Can you step up in there? Yeah. Okay. We made these four feet wide. Uh, we can reach to the other side. It's not super comfortable. Me, he can't reach to the other side. Uh, but we can access it from the outside too if necessary. Good job. Clearly it's much cooler in here now. Bear approves. This is a lot of pepper blitz. Um, I want to talk really briefly about the spacing in here. The spacing between each of these plants is between 10 and 12 inches and then some of them are maybe what more like seven or eight inches i uh, didn't measure it it's all round about between seven and 12 inches some of them have a little more space in between them peppers like to hold hands they like being planted close to one another and um, what i have found when i give them a lot of space is they end up being a lot more spindly but whenever you plant them close together for whatever reason they do better i am not a pepper expert by any means um, i've i've had uh, one year that I accidentally had a phenomenal pepper year was so covered up in them I didn't know what to do with them and then um, you know failed pretty good for a couple years and now I've done a lot of reading and have decided that this is how I was gonna do it I feel pretty good about it waited to put them out did top some of them but not all of them um, I'm trying some different fertilization things I've heard really good things by using blood meal with peppers so we'll probably try a little bit of that this year we're growing a lot of them so we should at least get something what are you doing weirdo <laughs> well guys I actually have a little more planning to do but we're gonna sign off because my camera battery is very low it was a lot today yeah we didn't even get to everything we wanted to but close yeah well thank you for hanging out with us on this adventure the beginning of this adventure it has only begun i feel like it's ending your part's beginning <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but I do definitely feel that whole bam we grow food thing. Looking oh, at yeah, this, oh yeah, feel it. I feel it. I'm good. I feel I felt it down it. here. <laughs> right. I felt it. I felt of it. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We bless you. Until next time.